Hey, how's it going? Welcome to episode 9 of Sound Design and Editing for Visual Media. In the last episode, we started looking at a sound design project I did recently for a competition. So definitely watch that if you haven't. I explained a lot of things there that I won't be repeating today, like how I set up my sound design chain, what my project layout looks like, and also some basic sound design techniques using pitch, reversing, time stretching, real simple stuff, but very effective. Today, I want to focus on how I did the robot vocalizations for that project, which I think was the strong suit of my project overall and creating vocalizations for all kinds of creatures and robots and mythical monsters is a huge part of sound design and very fun too anyway let's jump into reaper and get started last episode as we listened through the sound palette i found a fishing beeper that i thought would make a good bass sound for making robot vocalizations beeps are easy to manipulate they're simple and they hold well against all kinds of time stretching and pitch shifting and so on without sounding too crazy or introducing too many artifacts as a very general rule of thumb the more simple your bass sound the more you can go nuts with DSP on top of it without noticing any kind of weirdness. As always, our main focus with sound design is how our sound design will help the story. And in this case, the reason for making robot vocalizations is simply to inject the robot with emotion so the audience can learn to like it and then watch it suffer. <laughs> So first, let's design the overall tone and character of our sound. I'm gonna put the beeps on my 2FX track, play it, and we're gonna do a sound check. First thing I need is a compressor and an EQ so that there's an overall uniformness between our sounds. I'll also saturate the sound using Vitamin. And Vitamin is great because it can apply saturation to multiple bands. So in this case, we can use it to bring out the highs without adding too much rumble and muddiness to the lows and mids. Next, I'll run the whole thing through Isotope Trash, which is a super powerful and sophisticated plugin with tons of compartments. It also has amazing presets. So I'm gonna just have a browse through the presets, find one I like, and then just adjust it to my liking. Never listen to people who hate on presets. If you want to do audio work for a living, whatever you can do to work faster translates directly into money in your pocket because you're paid per project. So if you take less time doing it, that means you are paid more per hour to do it. Simple as that. But anyway, getting back to our sound, I also need something to adjust the pitch with. So I'm gonna use sound shifter for that. And I'm gonna assign its pitch shift parameter to a knob on my MIDI controller. Finally, let's use Mondo Mod for some amplitude modulation, which I'll also assign to a knob on my controller. Overall, any parameter that I want to edit in real time, I will assign to a knob or a fader for more organic results. From there, there are two directions you can go. The simple way is to simply chop the beeps up and then from there apply pitch envelopes to them using item-based envelopes. And you get stuff like this. To adjust the envelope of an item, what I have done is I've gone to my preferences, appearance, media, and in this page you can select what types of parameters you want to see on top of your MIDI item. So I have all of them selected so I can adjust the volume, I can mute clips, and I can also add effects as well as lock them. And I can also click on this symbol here and open envelopes for the item. So I can just select the pitch envelope before I duplicate it a bunch of times and then for each item I'll go and draw in an envelope with the same mouse modifiers as you know normal automation. Alternatively I can use a sampling plugin to get more control over the bass sound and it's overall a slightly more streamlined and organic method of sound design. For this project I used Contact but since this is a Reaper tutorial let's use Rhea Samplomatic 5000. It's Reaper's built-in sampler and it may not look as glamorous as Contact or some other plugins out there but it does most of what contact is capable of and more than enough for our applications. I will also assign the pitch parameter from Rio Samplomatic to a knob. Now the way a sampler plays with pitch is by adjusting the playback rate. So while we have another knob for our sound shifter doing the same thing, in reality they are quite different.
Right now, the sampler will just play the file when I press a key. We can also have it change the playback rate when I press different keys. However, it's all going to be the same file over and over again. So another thing I can do is map different parts of the audio to different keys. To place different parts of one audio file on different notes, first I'm going to import my item from the Media Explorer and then use Dynamic Split to chop them up. I explained Dynamic Split in the last episode for this exact procedure, so I'm just blazing through today. Find the right threshold to catch most of the sounds, have a trailing and leading pad for safety, and then hit split items. You can also save these settings as a preset so you can get to them faster later on. Um, next, I'm going to rename these samples using a great tool from Reapack called Amalgama Item Name Manipulation. It's a really useful tool. It gives you this UI. So I'm going to clear their existing names, add a prefix. Let's call it Fishing Beeper Chops. And then I'm going to number them. Type S so the number goes in the end. And then I type 01 so that they are numbered from 01. Hit OK. And now they're all numbered from 01 to 45. Now we're going to render these, which I already have a preset for as well. Basically render selected items. And I'm going to add the dollar sign item wildcard. So they're named after the item. Choose the correct folder and correct sample rate based on your source audio. And hit render offline. It doesn't take too, too long. This is actually in real time right now. Once we're done, click on show and finder and all my samples are in a folder really neat and I do this for all projects and I have a collection of instruments from previous projects that I can use anytime. Back to Reaper I'm going to select another great MPL script called RS5K manager background and this allows dragging and dropping of samples kind of in the style of Ableton and contact. Uh, so I'll select my items drop them in this window and this will then put RS5K instances on the selected track with those samples loaded. And now when I press different keys, I get different parts of the sample. Additionally, if there are samples you don't think you're going to use, you can remove them and then instead extend the range of adjacent samples. I'm really blazing through this, but I'll link to a Kenny Joya video that explains RS5K in more detail. But now in a few steps, I have a functional instrument I can work with. Different keys give me different parts of the sample. And I can adjust the pitch, playback rate, and also the amplitude modulation speed using knobs. Great. And then once I have a comfortable workflow going, I'm okay with the sound. I'm just going to record for a good, you know, 45 minutes or so. I think before submitting my entry, I did a solid two, three hours. So this is just a sped up version of that. And I won't be able to ever reproduce exactly what I did before. But that's the nature of experimentation. I know though that if I keep playing and keep adjusting, I'll eventually get enough workable sounds to place in this short project. Once I'm done, I just go through the file. I play it and chop bits of it that I like and put them on a sell track or a select track. Don't expect every second of audio you record to be gold. That's not the expectation here. You just loop a sound and work on it for half an hour. And if we're lucky, we'll get a handful of usable sounds out of this. This is the nature of experimentation, in my opinion. You put down 100 ideas and pick the most useful five and the rest go in the garbage. No problem. Now, there are lots of uber useful plugins that help you do stuff like this, which are a lot more sophisticated. But Reassamplematic 5000 is essentially free once you buy the Reaper license. And again, if you're doing sound design for a living, the best tip I can give you is to master what you have before you spend hard-earned money on plugins and other goodies. The lower you keep your overhead costs, the more lucrative your sound design career will be for you, especially at the beginning when you're just trying to stay afloat. So I selected a few of these tracks and now let's put them in the project. Yeah, sounds good to me. Regardless of what you think about whether this sound works or not, I just really wanted to show you the process of using a sampler. And this has multiple applications other than vocalizations for really any kind of sound design work. Put it in a sampler, create a performance out of your sound design work rather than just, you know, programming in and writing in envelopes. I think it's a way more organic way of doing things and a lot more fun as well. So that's it for today. Make sure to check the blog out as always for all the extra notes and cheat sheets and custom actions and stuff like that. You may have noticed that I've been making 
making these videos with less frequency than usual. And that's because I have some extra jobs these days. When I started this series, I had no job or no prospect ever of getting a job. So, <laughs> so I hope you forgive me for that. And it hopefully will give you a chance to check out all the past episodes. I think there's about 130 minutes of tutorials real tightly packed. So definitely check those out if you haven't, because my analytics say that you haven't. And otherwise, you know how YouTube works, like and comment and subscribe. Have a great holiday season and I'll talk to you soon. Bye bye.